without any further ado, let us quickly find out the answers and explanations for question number 69 to 85 for this year's prelims question paper, which was just held on June 5. So with reference to non-fungible tokens, consider the following statements. Now, non-fungible tokens is something that has been very clearly uh, explained in the Science Digest classes also, in the prelims, revision series, videos also, in your daily readers also. So what they're asking is a very, very basic thing about non-fungible tokens. And this question can be easily answered by the technique of elimination. Look at the three statements. They enable the digital representation of physical assets. They are unique cryptographic tokens that exist on a blockchain. They can be traded or exchanged at equivalency. Forget about statement one and two. This statement is very, very incorrect. It just refutes the meaning of non-fungibility. Non-fungibility means that they are unique. They cannot be traded at equivalency. <laughs> so the only option which does not have statement three is option A. Now, without even bothering about what is written in one and two, the statement three itself gives us the clue to this question. And this is what fungibility means. This is what we studied in our Patshala readers. A fungible item means an item that can be replaced by another identical item. Things like currency, gold, even cryptocurrency, all these are fungible items. But non-fungible tokens are unique because they cannot be replaced. They are non-fungible, they are unique and irreplaceable. This is the basic meaning of non-fungible tokens. Moving ahead, consider the following. Ghat Prabha in the state of Telangana, Gandhi Sagar in MP, Indra Sagar, what are, we, what are they asking us? Now, such questions where they're asking you the number of incorrectly matched pairs, which of the above pairs are not matched correctly. So you have to read the question very well. And such questions cannot be answered by the technique of elimination. You have to know with certainty the correct state for each of these reservoirs. So, Ghat Prabha is uh, in the state of Karnataka. Gandhi Sagar is in MP. Indra Sagar is again in MP. And Maithon is in Dhanbad in the state of Jharkhand. So, how many of these are incorrectly matched? Three broadly are incorrectly matched. So, the answer is would be C. Only three pairs are not correctly matched. Reading the question carefully is the Trick and leaving the question we're not, when you're not sure of even one of these is another trick to save yourself from negative marking. In India, which of the following compiles information on industrial disputes, closures, retrenchments, and layoffs? Now, the Central Statistics Office would not maintain such minute data on the employees. So this would be easily ruled out by common sense. Even the Department for Promotion of Industry and Trade, if it, it would go on to these things, layoffs and retentions, it wouldn't be able to promote trade properly. So this is also obviously incorrect. Labor Bureau is the most apt organization to take care of labor rights. The codification of labor laws, labor codes was done this year. So Labor Bureau becomes important. And this is the correct answer to this question. What is the role of coal controllers organization? Now this year, our country faced a glaring coal crisis. Our thermal power plants, they were left with just four days of coal in the month of October. And again, in February, we had uh, March. We often kept hearing about the coal shortage. A lot was being done by the government to ensure the availability of coal with our thermal power plants. So central any organization related to coal becomes important. Any data related to coal becomes important. This was specifically told to you. And the coal controllers organization often released data like on uh, this much is the grade of coal left. Uh, this is the grade of coal. This is the quality of coal. So this organization maintains all this data. So yes, it is a major source of coal statistics for the government of India. And it maintains the progress of uh, different kinds of coal blocks that we have. It hears any objection to the government's notification relating to acquisition of coal bearing areas. Now, this is a government organization. Any body which would hear objection after government's notification would be above the government or at par with the government. 
so it can be done by the courts only objection to the government's notification can be done either by the government handled by the government or by courts so it definitely does not look like the task of coal controllers organization and uh, three is present in this ruled out three is present in this ruled out one two definitely correct we don't have to see c and d both have to so this also seems like an obviously correct statement Coming to fourth, this would determine our final answer. It ensures that coal mining companies deliver coal to end users in the prescribed time. So yes, this organization takes care of loading of coal and uh, timely delivery. So D is the correct answer to this question. Particular area is brought under the fifth schedule of the Constitution of India. Which one of these uh, following statements best reflects the consequences of it? Fifth schedule. it is for the protection of tribal rights except for sto four states which are covered in the sixth schedule so now let us read the options it would prevent the transfer of land of tribal people to non tribal people can be correct but let's not jump to conclusions we'll keep this as an option this would create a local self governing body in that area local self governing bodies are actually found in all the areas uh without the extension of fifth schedule in fact fifth schedule restricted the uh, coming of these bodies in the areas declared protected it had to be specifically extended through this act pisa panchayat extension to scheduled areas this act allowed creation of local self governing bodies in the fifth schedule areas and uh, c, c option this would convert that area into a union territory looks very incorrect delhi is a union territory chandigarh is a union territory we don't have any fifth schedule area in delhi so definitely incorrect the state having such areas would be declared a special category state now a state having a fifth schedule area being declared as a special category state seems very incorrect because we have usually the mountainous states Uh, which have a difficult terrain difficulty in creating infrastructure that lag behind in development these states demand special category status and special category status or uh, states are also often in news because different states keep on demanding the status because they get more aid in from the government the correct answer was a next question the india sanitation coalition okay i've not heard of this body very much this was not frequently in news but let's still read sometimes when the bodies which are not very much in news the question around them is very easy so it is a platform to promote sustainable sanitation and it is funded by the government of india and the world health organization had it been funded by the government of india and the world health organization it would have been a very famous organization but this coalition this platform is funded by fikki so this is a very good coalition organ uh, platform coalition which promotes sustainable sol uh, sanitation solutions so this statement is incorrect it is funded by fikki maintained by fikki and then the next statement is the national institute of urban affairs is an apex body of the ministry of housing and urban affairs now this national institute of urban affairs is quite an autonomous institute and it provides innovative solutions to address the challenges of urban india but both the statements mentioned here seem incorrect and since they are asking about the correct statement so d looks like the correct answer because neither one nor two seem correct so we will go with option d as the answer to this question next which of the following has been constituted under the environmental protection act 1986 now river water disputes management of ground water is often in news and for any body that appears in news i always suggest one thing ask yourself three questions whether it is a constitutional body whether it is a statutory body or whether it's just an executive body so environmental protection act 1986 means it's a statutory body and which of these is a statutory body the central ground water authority is a statutory body set up under the environmental protection act 1986 c is the it's a very factual question and you have to pay attention to these minute details when you study about any body and c is the correct answer to this question 
with reference to the United Nations Credentials Committee, consider the following statement. It is a committee set up by the United Nations Security Council. Now, United Nations Security Council is just a 15 member body and it has very big fish to fry. It will not keep on uh, checking the credentials of every UN member representative. This would be a larger task of the United Nations General Assembly. This definitely not correct. And this credentials committee meets every year when the regular sessions of United Nations General Assembly are held. So these are held every year in September, not in March and June. It just meets once uh, with the regular sessions of United Nations General Assembly. These two seem incorrect. And yes, this committee assesses the credentials of all UN member representatives before submitting a report to the General Assembly for approval. So no approval is required, but uh, um, these two statements are, I'm not sure whether an approval is required or not, but let's just go to the options. One and two are definitely incorrect. They are asking the correct statements. The correct statement is only A. So three, we can be sure that three is correct. Polar code. Now this year, polls were so much in news. We also studied them specifically in our science digest classes, in our readers. There were specific uh, initiatives by the government of India to note codify our uh, policies for the two poles. And polar code also have uh, policies for the two poles of the earth, the North Pole and the South Pole. So only one option here mentions about the North Pole and South Pole both. And this body, so this uh, correct answer would be statement C. Which of the following best describes the polar code? It is statement C. No, this body does not uh, take care of the safety of ships because this would be taken care of by individual countries and uh, the agreement does not uh, revolve around the North Pole only it revolves around both the poles. C is the seemingly most appropriate answer to this question. With reference to the United Nations General Assembly consider the following statements. UN General Assembly can grant observer status to the non-member states. Yes, I have seen Palestine which was uh, not a full-fledged member, but it had observer status. Intergovernmental organizations, yes, so many intergovernmental organizations, the uh, like ASEAN, the multilateral banks like ADB, all these have observer status at the United Nations General Assembly. So both these are correct. And permanent observers in the United Nations General Assembly can maintain missions with the UN. Definitely they can. So all these statements seem correct. And this is the correct option to this question. Tea board. We studied specifically about the tea board because the exports of teas, substandard varieties of teas being imported into India uh, for re exports, it was in news. So, tea board is a statutory body set up under the Tea Act 1953. It's attached to the Ministry of Commerce and because it handles about the trade of tea. So, uh, this is definitely incorrect. Bangalore is not related to tea at all. It is Karnataka, which is uh, not uh, growing tea much. The tea is mostly cultivated in maybe Kolkata could be the head office of tea board. And uh, it has overseas offices. Let's just see whether we have any information about the tea board of India. Yes, it's a government agency established under the Tea Act in 1953. This we covered in our UPSC Patshala reader. It comes under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Yes, it does. And it has offices in London, Moscow, Dubai. So let's go back to the uh, options. Four looks correct. One looks correct. And we have arrived at our answer B. Greenwashing. Now, what is whitewashing? When we try to paint things and uh, make a picture uh, that is not as uh, clear as we try to paint it. Similarly, greenwashing is when we try to paint things and make them appear greener than they actually are. So when a company conveys false in, in, uh, information or gives a false impression that its products are very eco-friendly and environmentally sound and they are greener than they actually are, it is known as greenwashing. So A would be the correct answer to this question. Consider the following statements. High clouds primarily reflect solar radiation and cool the surface of the earth. So high clouds are uh, high altitude clouds. They have a lot of uh, 
ice crystals they are very cool at high altitude temperature is very low and these uh, clouds don't uh, actually reflect solar radiation they allow most of it to pass through this is wrong low clouds have a high absorption of infrared radiation emanating from the earth's surface and thus cause warming effect so low clouds actually are near to the surface of the earth and they reflect solar radiation and they cool the surface of the earth they have a cooling effect so they are not correctly uh, given statements which of them are correct i don't think any of them are correct d would be the correct answer to this question consider the following statements bidi bidi is a large refugee settlement in northwestern kenya bidi bidi is the largest refugee settlement camp or in the world and it is in the state of uganda not kenya so this is incorrect some people who fled from south sudan civil war live in bidi bidi yes they do some people who fled from civil war in somalia no not everybody would live in bidi bidi only there would be other refugee camps also yes kenya also has a refugee camp so uh we have this state of uganda here and then we have uh, kenya and we have south sudan so these are all some neighboring countries in africa and uh, people from somalia actually have somalia is a country here you know a coastal country and people from somalia actually come to uh, this refugee camp dadab in kenya so two and three seem correct one is not true so we've arrived at our answer c would be the correct answer to this question moving ahead member states of the organization of turkic states now this was organization was in use because turkmenistan was trying to gain membership of this organization it has been given uh, observer status this turkic council has been renamed as the organization of turkic states and uh, turkmenistan was is trying to be uh, given membership at present the member states of this organizations are the ones that represents the that represent the turkic ethnicity the turkic language so of these azerbaijan uzbekistan are members of this organization 2 and 5 is the correct answer these are the member states of organization of turkic states it's turkey sorry turkey then we have kazakhstan here this largest central asian republic kazakhstan we have Uzbekistan as the member Turkmenistan has been given observer status only we have Azerbaijan and we have Kyrgyzstan here Kyrgyzstan so these are the members of organization of turkic states consider the following statements gujarat has the largest solar power plant in india no i think the largest solar power uh, power plant in india would be in a very very hot state like rajasthan uh, the bhadla national power solar park is the largest solar park in india Gujarat has gift city. It does not have largest solar park. Kerala, yes, Kochi Airport is actually the fully solar powered international airport and uh, the largest floating solar photovoltaic project in India was inaugurated by M K Stalin in Tamil Nadu. So this statement is uh, incorrect. This statement is also incorrect. And what are they asking? Correct statement. So two is the only correct statement here, and B is the correct answer to this question. UN clause United Nation Convention on Laws of the Sea this was often in news we often heard about it we've read about it so many times here you can read very category it, it was in news because china was being very uh, assertive in international waters and it even restricted the rights of in ocean passage of many countries so basically territorial sea and uh, exclusive economic zone is what the question is talking about so territorial sea extends up to 12 nautical miles from the baseline and foreign ships have the right to innocent passage through this region an exclusive economic zone it extends up to 200 nautical miles from the baseline now let's come back to the question they are asking territorial sea extends up to 12 nautical miles correct rights of innocent passage exists through the international territory uh, through the territorial sea yes it does exist exclusive economic zone shall not extend beyond 200 nautical miles correct which of the following are correct all of them are correct d would be the correct answer to this question so if you read properly even your current affairs readers um, you would be able to solve many of these questions and in some others a general understanding common sense some techniques like elimination would help you steer through this hope you've uh, done your best now it's time to relax that is all